Hi guys, Sci-Fi Recapped here. Before we start, warning. Spoilers ahead. Today, I'm gonna explain a thriller and science fiction movie, called iBoy. There is a young boy, named Tom. Tom has a childhood friend, named Danny. At school, Tom coverly likes a girl, named Lucy. They meet each other after school to discuss their homework. A bad boy, named Eugene, suddenly comes to bother their conversation. At home, Tom lives with his grandmother, named Nan. That night, Tom intends to meet Lucy at her house. Her door was unlocked. He immediately goes inside to check on Lucy. Apparently, four criminals had just raped her, and one of them had filmed the scene. After Tom sees the incident, he immediately runs away and tries to call the police. When his phone is connected, he is shot right in his head. After that night, Tom wakes up in the hospital after being in a coma for 10 days. He sees his grandmother taking care of him. Then the doctor explains Tom's condition, actually there were fragments from the cell phone that entered his brain. The fragments entered along with the bullet that hit his head. The doctor explains that he couldn't remove the fragment 100% because it is too risky for his brain cells. The doctor tells him to come back in case something strange happened to him. At home, Tom begins to feel something unusual. Now he is able to listen to conversations from other people's electronic devices very clearly. Transmission of digital data traffic can also be seen by him, due to the cell phone fragments that have been fused with his brain. It's as if he has access to data servers all over the world. He can retrieve any data digitally without using any electronic device. Everything he needs is already in his brain. Tom returns to visit Lucy to apologize to her after a long time they haven't seen each other. He regrets that he couldn't do much to protect Lucy that night. However, she understands it and she hopes that everything will get better as usual. On the way home, Tom listens again to all conversations that occur on electronic devices around him. At one point, he becomes very confused because of things he had never seen or heard before, and finally he passed out. The next day, Tom wakes up from his stupor. He plans to return to school after his surgery break. He meets Danny at school, and tells him that he suspects Eugene of his involvement at Lucy's house incident that night. He says that Eugene's cell phone was connected to Lucy's Wi-Fi right at that time of the incident. But Danny is still not convinced by his current statement. Back to the class, Tom intentionally checks the data transmission from all his friends cell phones. He chooses to focus on spying Eugene's cell phone. He is very surprised when he finds a video of Lucy being raped that night. From this point on, he's getting more convinced by his suspicions of Eugene. With his superpower, he instantly creates a little explosion on Eugene's cell phone. Eugene gets shocked and the others laugh at him. That night, he goes to a party to spy on Eugene and his men. Now, he knows that Eugene's gang consists of four people, Eugene is the leader of the gang. Then he directly walked over to Eugene. Luckily, there is Danny who stops Tom and Eugene from attacking each other. He leads Tom out of the party. For the last time, Tom tells him that Eugene was the perpetrator of Lucy's incident, but sadly he still denies Tom's statement. Tom returns to visit Lucy to cheer her up. From upstairs, they see Eugene and his men laughing innocently. He sees Lucy's expression immediately turn sad, which means she actually knew the perpetrator was Eugene. Unknown messages begin to be sent to Eugene as the beginning of Tom's revenge. From his bed, Tom learns how to hack a system using his superpower. He stealthily terrorizes Eugene and his men after mastering the technique last night. Their cell phones are hacked by him, so he could see all the activities they are doing. At the same night, Tom starts his hacking action. From turning off the lights in their house, until he accidentally records one of Eugene's friend, named Cass, masturbating. During a presentation at his school, Tom hacks the laptop used by his teacher. He presents the video about Cass masturbating in his room, making all students laugh. And Cass, who watches the video too, feels very embarrassed about it. After school, Tom tells the latest story to Lucy who had not been to school for a long time. She is very entertained by the story, along with Tom who secretly sends a message to Lucy. He uses the alias I boy in the message in order not to be known by others, including Lucy. As they make their way back from the riverbank, unexpectedly Eugene and his men confront them. Eugene thinks that the two of them had been terrorizing them all along. When Eugene wants to beat him up, he immediately sends an unknown message to them that they are targeting the wrong person. They are confused and look around for who is the sender of the message, so Tom and Lucy get a chance to escape from them. After they searched around and couldn't find the sender of the message, they intend to steal a car on the side of the road. When they managed to get into the car, suddenly the car was locked automatically and could not be opened from inside. This can happen because of Tom who has hacked the car system from afar. He threatens Eugene and his men over the radio in the car. He asks why they attack Lucy's family, while making the car full of smoke. He intentionally tries to scare them even more by casting fire on the car. Because Cass is so scared, he reveals that they were ordered by someone named Cuts. After Tom gets the answer, he lets them go and soon the car explodes. After getting information about Cuts, he goes to Cuts's house for revenge. 
Surprisingly, Danny, is also in the residence. The television which Cuts and his friends are watching is hacked by Tom. Then, he plays a video that Cuts' car has been peed on. Cuts is very surprised and he immediately goes with his friend to check the condition of his car. Tom goes inside Cuts' house after they came out. He destroyed all the electronic devices inside the house using his superpower. Coincidentally, he also finds Cuts' drug storage box and takes Cuts' drugs with him. With the drugs, he has a brilliant plan. He puts Cuts' drugs into many small packages and puts them where Eugene and his men live. And then he hacks into the police station to report Eugene and his men that they are involved in drugs industry. With the evidence that Tom had previously placed, the next day Eugene and his men are arrested by the police along with the evidence. Meanwhile, Cuts' bank account is also hacked by Tom, making his bank balance runs out. The next night, Tom quietly listens to Cuts on the phone with his boss, named Elman. Elman gives Cuts a final warning to find out who's messing up their activities. From the top of a building, Tom tracks Elman's whereabouts right away, but he doesn't find any information about Elman, like something was protecting him. At the same time, Cuts orders his remaining men to find the location of iBoy by confiscating all electronic devices in the area. Nevertheless, they still don't know that Tom doesn't need any hacking tools. The next day, he catches a signal of a drug deal between Cuts and Elman after he finishes his exam. He plans to thwart the transaction at night by burning all the drugs. Tom's grandmother who is worried about Tom's behavior changed, meets Danny and asks for his help to look after Tom. Danny agreed to help. Meanwhile, Tom remains to follow Cuts's car. Unfortunately, he loses track of Cuts in the middle of the trip because Cuts had thrown his cell phone in a random trash can. With an amazing idea from Tom, he hacks a satellite to track down Cuts's vehicle and finally finds it. He resumes his journey to their base. Tom sees a lot of people guarding the place. He learns martial arts the moment he sneaks into the place. With his new knowledge, he can paralyze one of the guards there. Then he directly sets fire to drugs located not far from his location. When he wants to leave the place, unexpectedly cuts and his men appear and beat Tom until he almost dies. In an urgent situation, he attempts to make high-frequency sounds with his superpower that can interfere with everybody's hearing. That way, he can escape safely from that place. Tom wakes up in an isolated spot by the river. In the meantime, Lucy is still waiting for him at school, because the previous day they had promised to take the exam together. By the time Tom arrives at the school, the exam is over. Lucy is disappointed with him. Outside the school, they are very surprised to see Cass's corpse hanging above. Danny meets with Tom to see how he's doing. Then Tom asks Danny who is Cass' killer, he replies that it's probably I boy responsibility. Since then, Tom feels all the problems caused by him and his superpower. He returns to the doctor who had operated on his head, asking to remove the remaining cell phone fragments that were still in his brain. The doctor refuses because the cell phone fragments were embedded deep in Tom's brain. In other words, removing it is the same as killing Tom. He returns home regretful and guilty for all of this. When he enters the house, Elman is waiting inside with his men pointing a gun at Tom's head. Tom's grandmother also becomes a hostage for them. All this time, Elman had known that the person using the alias I boy was Tom. Not only that, Elman also knows Tom's superpower is hacking without using electronic devices. Turns out, he got all the information from Danny who had been watching Tom all this time. Danny is willing to tell the information for money. Elman commands Tom to hack into the bank system where the money could be transferred to his bank account. At first Tom refuses to do it, but Elman has caught Lucy at the warehouse and threatens to kill her if Tom doesn't obey his orders. In the end, Tom chooses to comply with him. He starts hacking into the bank system and slowly filling the money into Elman's bank account. Unbeknownst to anyone, Tom hacks into Eugene's cell phone to call the police. After a while, the police come to the warehouse to search the area. However, Eugene and his men manage to escape the search. Lucy, who sees a gun on the floor, instantly takes it and points the gun at Eugene and his men. This time, she manages to escape with Eugene's gun. When she wants to leave the place, she encounters Elman who is carrying Tom. Eventually, she returns to being a hostage and Elman commands Tom again to start filling the money into his bank account. In that situation, Tom tries to save himself and Lucy by hacking their cell phone until it explodes. Tom is able to get out, but suddenly he is hit by Elman from behind using an iron pipe. Elman wants to kill Tom straight away because he is so pissed off. At the right time, Lucy appears with a gun and shoots Elman in the hand. Because he still has some energy, he hits back at Lucy. Tom, who sees the fight, becomes very angry, so he takes out the rest of his power by gathering shockwaves and throws them at Elman until he dies with it. After that night, Tom returns to a coma and regains consciousness after a few days. He is accompanied by his grandmother in the hospital. Things start to get better since Elman died. Now, the area where Tom lives is peaceful and there is no more crime going on. Danny, who has betrayed Tom, wants to say sorry by giving Tom the money he received from Elman earlier. Tom refuses the money and says that not everything can be paid for with money. It is revealed that Danny was the one who recorded the video that night. 
Definitely, their friendship will never be the same as before. In the meantime, Tom and Lucy start their first date. They can regain their calmness, and now Lucy knows that our boy is Tom. His superpower to hack is still there which he can use to do good things. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.